Hey friends, Dr. John Legaretta here. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist and retina specialist. You know, as someone deeply immersed in the world of ophthalmology, I often find myself marveling at the complexity of our eyes. They're like these incredibly sophisticated cameras that we carry around 24 seven. But imagine this, one of the most crucial parts of this camera is thinner than a sheet of paper and is at risk of getting damaged. Today, we're gonna look into the crucial yet fascinating topic of retinal detachments. We'll explore what happens if this ultra thin layer decides to go rogue and how that can drastically alter your vision. Let's get into it. Our retina is the thin layer at the back of our eye that helps us see the world around us. When it detaches, it's a serious condition that needs immediate medical attention. So how do you know if you have a retinal detachment? Well, it, when it comes to a retinal attachment, your body gives you certain warning signs. The three most significant indicators are a sudden appearance of floaters, flashes of light, and gradual loss of peripheral vision. Floaters can look like tiny specks, dots, lines, or cobwebs moving in your field of vision. While a few floaters are normal, a sudden increase is a red flag. Flashes of light are more noticeable in the dark and can feel like a camera flash or lightning streaks in your visual field. They usually occur when you move your head or eye around. The third symptom, progressive vision loss, is often described as a curtain closing in on your field of vision. This could be from any side, top, bottom, or the side. It's crucial to remember these symptoms as timely intervention can significantly improve the chances of a successful treatment and recovery. If you experience any of these signs or symptoms, you should seek immediate medical attention. There are three types of retinal detachments, regimetogenous, tractional, and serous or exudative detachments. Regimetogenous retinal detachments are the most common type of retinal attachment and it's usually associated with aging. As we age, the vitreous, the gel-like substance that fills the eye, can shrink and pull away from the retina, causing a tear or hole. Once there's a break in the retina, the vitreous fluid can pass through this hole and accumulate behind the retina, separating it from the underlying tissues to which it needs to adhere to function properly. Symptoms often include a sudden increase in floaters and flashes of light. Tractional retinal detachments are the second type and occur less commonly and are often associated with certain medical conditions like poorly controlled diabetes. In this type, scar tissue on the retina surface contracts and pulls the retina away from its normal position. The scar tissue can grow on the surface of the retina due to inflammation, vascular abnormalities, or even injury. As the scar tissue contracts, it might cause the retina to pull up from the back wall of the eye, leading to the detachment. Serous or exudative retinal detachments are the third and least common type and can occur without any type of tear, hole, or break in the retina. Instead, they're usually caused by inflammation, injury, or vascular abnormalities that result in fluid accumulating underneath the retina. Conditions like inflammatory disorders, cancers, or even severe high blood pressure can cause this leakage of fluid. The fluid accumulates under the retina, pushing it away from the back of the eye, causing a detachment. Each of these types of retinal attachments present unique challenges and require different treatment approaches. It's important to have regular eye exams and to seek proper medical attention if you have any of these symptoms suggestive of a retinal detachment. When it comes to treating retinal detachments, there are three main surgical options for treating them. Pneumatic retinopaxy, scleral surgery, and vitrectomy. Pneumatic retinopaxy is the least invasive procedure and is typically used for small, uncomplicated retinal detachments. During this procedure, a bubble of gas is injected into the vitreous, the gel-like substance that fills your eye. The gas bubble presses against the retinal tear, effectively sealing it off and allowing the retina to attach itself to the wall of the eye. The patient may need to position their head in specific ways for a period of time to ensure the gas bubble is applying pressure in the right place. Over time, the body naturally absorbs the gas bubble. Scleral buckle surgery. This is the more traditional surgery for retinal attachments. The surgeon attaches a tiny silicone band or buckle around the sclera, which is the white part of the eye. This indents the wall of the eye, relieving the tug of the retina and allowing it to settle back into place. Sometimes a gas bubble is also injected into the eye to help the retina reattach. The buckle remains on the eye permanently. 
vitrectomy. This is the most common surgery for severe or complicated retinal detachments. During this procedure, the surgeon removes the vitreous from the eye to prevent it from pulling on the retina. Once removed, the space is filled with a gas bubble or silicone oil to keep the retina in place as it heals. If a gas bubble is used, it will eventually re be replaced by the eye's natural fluids. If silicone oil is used, another procedure will be needed to remove it. Each of these surgical options has its benefits and potential complications. The choice of procedure depends on factors like the cause, location, and extent of the retinal attachment, as well as the surgeon's expertise. Regardless of the method used, the goal of surgery is always to reattach the retina and to re prevent or reverse vision loss. As we've learned today, retinal attachments are serious conditions that can lead to permanent vision loss if left untreated. Understanding the warning signs is the first step towards safeguarding your sight. If you ever experience new floaters, light flashes, or progressive vision loss, please seek immediate eye care. All right, folks, let's wrap this up. Retinal attachments, as we've seen, aren't just medical jargon. They're genuine, real-world problems that could sneak up on anyone. It's almost like when your laptop suddenly crashes and you haven't backed up your data. But instead of files, we're talking about our precious vision here. Look, it's simple. If your eyes start acting like a dodgy iPhone with weird flashes and floaters, don't just swipe it off. Seek help. And if you're wondering about what, the whys and hows, well, that's what we delved in today. The three types of retinal attachments and the trio of treatments to tackle them. Remember, we're living in a golden age of medical advancements. The tools we have, the knowledge we've amassed, it's remarkable. So make use of regular eye checkups and always, always prioritize your health. After all, the world is full of books to read, sunsets to see, and memories to make. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Smash that like button if you found this useful. And as always, happy seeing. Take care, be kind, and I'll catch you in the next one.